really get tired of that subject, business messaging. It's clear there's so many channels for you to use. And uh, if there's one takeaway from the previous session, it's just, just start. Start somewhere with a channel. A couple of the speakers in that panel actually were with me earlier this year. I was going to say last year, but the year's flown. Were with me earlier this year at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. And actually, uh, it was Cinch who sponsored a panel session. And on it was Bouygues Telecom, Alexandre Cotero from Bouygues. And there was George, who's the co-founder of GoMeep, so a, an, an electric scooter and bicycle company based in Barcelona. And what really hit me was that the simplicity angle is the most important thing because George in his business, he obviously and his team are not business messaging experts. They found a company. It was an offshoot of Cinch. They went with them and they use one channel. And that channel was WhatsApp Business Messenger. And I remember during that panel discussion, he mentioned that there was just one instance of a customer not having WhatsApp who actually wanted to rent a scooter or had an issue with the scooter and therefore they had to resort to messaging via good old email. So that's it. Just keep it simple and go for it. Whether it's whether it's WhatsApp, whether it's SMS, RCS, RBM, whatever it is, just go for it. Anyway, we are now coming towards the end of day one of Meth Connects Wholesale 2022. But as mentioned earlier, part of wholesale and a huge part of wholesale, and it's a key driver and facilitator of things like IoT, because without it, you simply wouldn't have IoT. It's roaming. So roaming is a massive issue in the wholesale world. It's had, let's just say, certain challenges the past couple of years, and I'm sure those will be mentioned and will be looked at as well in terms of what's happening now, since hopefully a number of those challenges have been lifted. And uh, joining me now is Isabel Paradis. Isabel, hi. Hello, hello, James. How are you? Hello, I'm fine. Thank you, Isabel. Lovely to have you with us. You are, you are with Hot Telecom and you're joining me here and you'll be moderating this panel, which is sponsored by Deutsche Telekom Global Carrier. So they started the day with the keynote and you're ending the day with them looking at this whole issue of of roaming. So I will leave you to it. Enjoy the panel and have a great session. Thank you, James. Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening, everyone. And when, welcome to our panel of experts of actually roaming superstars, during which we will um, look into the future of roaming, the challenges, the opportunities, and also how to succeed or remain one of the last men or women standing in the new world of 5G. So one year ago, we did a survey with the Mobile Ecosystem Forum looking at the current status and the future view vision of 5G, uh, sorry, of roaming and 5G roaming, of course, that was part of that. We did a survey with a number of global roaming experts and we presented one year ago at this event. And I thought that maybe before we look in the future, it's good sometime to look into the past and see what these experts told us the current status of roaming was. And then maybe we can bring them on and see if anything has changed in the last year. So if you could share my presentation, please. Thank you. So this is the findings that came out of our survey last year. When we looked, we, we talked to the number of uh, global roaming experts and we said, where are we at with roaming? So what came out of that discussion is nothing much has changed. There was no new business model, no real push for Volti. People were starting to think about the closure of 2G, 3G networks and the impact it will have on roaming. And also some of them said roam like home models could become global. We could see soon a worldwide roam like home model. Also, it was we were coming out of the pandemic. So when I asked them what was, has been the impact of the pandemic in terms of traffic, uh, one year ago, they said we were, they were still at pre-pandemic levels in terms of roaming traffic. Operators were still unable to meet their commitments. They were asking for credits and remove some minimum free fees. Um, one impact of the pandemic was that operators discovered this IoT traffic and IoT roaming traffic they didn't have much information about. So now they had a visibility of what permanent roamers they had and also what IoT roamers uh, traffic was, was like. 
And also the general opinion was that people were expecting the traffic to recover by 2023. Now, one year ahead, let's see what's happened in the last year. So I, to do that, I will welcome my panel of experts. I would like to welcome Cedric Gonet. He's VP Global Business Support and Partnership at Orange. Uh, Hi, Atim, hello, hello, Cedric. Atim okay. Ake Osu, Manager International Roaming and Wholesale Negotiation at MTN Global Connect. Hello. Fran Francesco Vota, Senior Product Manager, 5G Roaming Enablement at Deutsche uh, Telecom Global Carrier. Hello, Fira, everybody. Fira Kassem, Director of Roaming Operations and Revenue Planning at Etisalat. Hi, Isabel. Hi, everyone. And last but not least, Brandon Cleary is CEO of Celesis. Welcome, guys. Hi, everybody. So maybe uh, we can get rid of this presentation and I can have a view of my victims. Oh, sorry, my panelists. <laughs> so welcome, guys, to the panel. So these are the things that you had told me one year ago about roaming, the status of roaming. If we look when we are one year ahead, where are we at? Any things have changed since last year? Any traffic evolution? Uh, any new challenges, business models? Who wants to get me started? Cedric, I know you're one of my favorite go-to victims. So Cedric, where are we at? How, how has it evolved in the last year? So roaming, generally speaking, didn't evolve so much. So we just find that there was a little comeback of the traffic following the pandemic, uh, especially during the last summer. But on the 5G roaming, it didn't evolve so much, except one event, which is the starting of the 2G, 2G sunset, uh, if we compare last year to this year. We have some uh, operators who are starting to switch off 2G, 3G. Okay. What about Volti? Anyone seeing some tra tra traction about Volti? Because I know last year when we did the survey, I think Volti was starting to get some traction in Volti roaming. Where are we at today? Is it something that operators are asking for? Any evolution on that front? Yeah, many operators have had to be forced to, to embrace Volti, particularly with um, the shutdown of 2G, 3G in many locations. So, I mean, Volti just remained the only option immediately. Um, to allow 4G roamers um, have a fallback to, to voice calls. So it's increasingly more embraced and Volte has become an option, okay. more or less. That may be, I think, sees that in, in the African continent. Is it the same in Europe or in the Middle East? Firas, what about the Middle East? Um, I mean, uh, it's crucial to, to keep improving uh, our con uh, consumer satisfaction while enabling new revenue models. So we all noticed the surge in data roaming traffic caused by all the IoT and 5G consumer mobile devices, which has been the main driver for mobile operators and for e and in specific to put more focus, invest, and look for new models to facilitate this increasing market demands. So, of course, one of these factors is Volti. Volti roaming is playing a big role for to get better quality of service in terms of voice, uh, file transfer, video, you know, uh, instant messaging, uh, and has been evolved amongst uh, roaming partners. Uh, we see a demand, um, plus uh, the sunsetting of more and more 2G and 3G networks has helped towards, you know, uh, having Volte as an security, uh, as a cont uh, cont continuity for voice roaming. So yes, things has, has been evolving and new developments is happening probably day by day, you know, on this matter. Okay. What about the traffic? At that time when we spoke one year ago, the traffic was below pre-pandemic level. Francesco, where, where do you see the traffic going? Has it recovered? Has it surpassed it? What do you see? Uh, okay, uh, it, it is. Uh, uh, the, it has a different growth on different regions. This is what we can say. Uh, for sure, in Europe, the traffic is above the pre-COVID situation, but there are other regions where I would say the traffic is more at the same level of the pre-COVID or still lower level. Okay, so the estimate of 2023 for a full recovery was actually correct. I will tend to say yes. Okay. We exceeded okay. actually, even before so, 2023, probably in. Uh, I mean, so in the Middle East, Dubai, you see. Really, yes. But we, is it we an already, explosion? We, yeah, go ahead, Fira. Yeah, we we already here noticed in Dubai, in the UAE, in general, that we have exceeded even pre-COVID, even before 2023, in terms of traffic. 
But is it in terms of roamers or in terms of the quantity that each roamer uses um, as a thing, as a difference? That's a great question, actually. That's a good point. Um, yes, in terms of traffic, not in terms of number of customers or, uh, let's say, inbound rom roamers. Yes. Okay. Okay. Anything, anyone wants to add anything in terms of development in the last year that's come? But not necessarily on 5G roaming because we're going to go into that in more detail next, but in terms of roaming in general. Anything um, else? Well, yeah, Isabel, um, post-COVID, we've seen um, a large appetite for roaming coming back. Um, the, the, the roamers, particularly outbound roamers, you know, from some parts of Africa, uh, were very hungry to start to travel again. And we've seen that increase. We've seen the, the Hajj return and other pilgrimage and other activities that you know, uh, major attractions for, for many Africans. So it's it's really grown. And in most in some cases to pre COVID um, times, in some other destinations maybe not yet, but it's it's growing. Okay. Okay. So now I guess it would be good to now look into the future. And of course the future of roaming has a lot to do about five G roaming. So maybe you can show my presentation again and I will share the next slide if you don't mind. Can you share my presentation? Thank you. So now if we look into the future, that is what um, you shared with me last year in terms of the future trends of, of roaming. And a lot of this had to do with 5G. So one of the things is the technology evolution. So 5G was driving the technology changes with, with Vaulty roaming, of course, local breakout, voice, and data. So and the next one was increased complexity. With all of that comes a lot of more complexity when, when we think about uh, network sizing, signaling encryption, multiple end-to-end -end SLAs, latency, and capacity management. Another trend that you were seeing coming was the e evolution of the ecosystem with added complexity. Uh, you've, some, you, the view of some of you was that it was going to become so complex that a lot of, of the carriers and maybe the operators would come out of the roaming business. There would be a consolidation and we would see maybe more and more roaming outsourcing and, and more the aggregator model being in, in a, being used. Uh, and with also with IoT roaming with the different models, you could see a lot of complexity and, and, and the need for different business models and, and the evolution towards a different business model that we've seen so far. So was those trends, uh, was that correct? Is that really what you're seeing happening? In terms, let's say, uh, in terms of the technology, the introduction of 5G roaming, Francesco, what have you seen in, in this evolution in the last year and, and maybe what you see going forward? Uh, okay, what we saw is that more and more operators are starting to deploy their 5G core network, 5G standalone core network, and are starting to test the new functionality that it brings. Um, what we also saw is that the standardization is going forward um, in terms of uh, that uh, there is a lot of discussion uh, on how 5G roaming should work. This discussion is proceeding and is highlighting how security, the new big concept of 5G, also needs operability. On how these two paradigms must come together to enable a consistent roaming. But what we also saw is that this unclarity in the standardization did not block innovators. Innovative operators, so the, the first one that deployed the core network started and are running the first roaming tests to really see how this new security paradigm will change, will change roaming in the years to come. And we are supporting this operator in this testing because it is, uh, even if there is some clarity, those testings are really so insightful for us and for our customers in general. Okay, so more proof of concept getting ready for things to kick up, to, to, right. to, kick, to, right. to, to start. Cedric, do you see the same thing, the same evolution? Anything other, another evolution that you've seen in the last year about 5G roaming? Maybe no, uh, We didn't see so much uh, commercial launch, but uh, what we see is that most operators are focusing on developing their 5G domestically first. And uh, we have to, to, to step up before having the full roaming deployment because it would be in the second step. The other point is that we are still have some, um, let's say, standardization point to raise and to, and to solve before being able. But what we see is a proof of concept starting to, to, to have vendors talking together in roaming and adopting the right, the right protocol for roaming. But 
no no real commercial launch uh, for the moment mm. and that's him i think last year when we spoke about this you said you think in africa it will take maybe longer to for 5g to kick in because 4g is still being deployed and this is still m the main focus is that still the case i'm glad you remember that i was going to <laughs> That I told you. I do yesterday. listen. I do listen. <laughs> yeah. And indeed, indeed, um, the expansion of 4G um, has been what we've seen across many regions. And the few 5G um, conversations that are being had are really on, stand, uh, on non standalone. So, mm -hmm. yes, um, there's more happening on 4G and Voltage, um, trying to capitalize and use that. Um, than 5G. So yes, the few 5G NSC conversations and tests and launches, but um, nothing in the quantity and the quantum that you, you, you talked about or you're expecting from other regions. Yeah. Nice hair, nice outfit, by the way, Atim. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, Brendan, you've been staying quiet, which is very dangerous on one of my panels because the quieter you are, the more in danger you are. <laughs> So, Brendan, what do you see, you know, the evolution in the last year? Have you seen anything exciting? Yeah, certainly just to repeat some of the points, um, you know, there's been a huge, a huge focus on Vaulty in general and getting that launched with investments in the, the IMS and the core networks. Um, you know, anytime you have a change, particularly from moving to a new technology like Vaulty that may not have been launched before, and at the same time going through sunset in 2G and 3G networks, any amount of change of that magnitude will bring issues as well. So we're, we're helping some of our customers in relation to some of the challenges they're having around that as well. Um, one notable one is the delivery of SMS um, being impacted a little bit. And that's obviously not just for ATP messages, but for OTA based steering as well when roamers go into a new country. And I think this is just going to be a factor of a lot of change that's happening in the industry. We are seeing a lot of 5G non-standalone as well um with uh 5g standalone being domestically done at the moment and obviously then on the interconnect level so when uh, operators are talking to each other over 5g or http2 um that is a point that the industry still has to come to consensus on um obviously there's uh, voices from different parts of the industry um that are advocating for you know the different benefits of the way it should be set up um, I, particularly on one side, you would have saying that 5G should be secure by design, end-to-end -end security, and that you know packets or messages should be encrypted from the sending network to the receiving network. Um, obviously, this brings challenges practically to um, other players in the industry, particularly signal providers or IPX players who provide value-added services today over 2G, 3G, 4G. Um, such as, you know, steering of rowing, security, IDS, analytics, um, BCE, all of these kinds of things. So what will that look like moving forward? Um, and this is not just from a signaling provider's point of view. A lot of MNOs rely on aggregators for these services as well. So how would they practically switch over to delivering VAS or, um, you know, having all of these additional services if they have to bring them locally? Um, so there's a lot of questions um, that still need to be answered, but um, that that conversation is continuing in earnest in the industry. And it'll be very interesting to see where the industry lands on on that particular topic, as it will dictate a lot of where 5G roaming will go in the future. Mm. And you've mentioned VAS, and I know VAS is one of Cedric's pet subjects when it comes to 5G. So what, what's your view? What's your take on, on that? I know last year when we spoke, it was a, a big unknown how that would pan out. Where are we at with the VAS, so the value added services in 5G? Uh, yeah, in fact, uh, it's clear that from an IP provider, if we we may, if, if we are just a dumb pipe IP provider, it doesn't make sense, and especially in the 5G world where the roaming value will decrease. So uh, for sure, if we want to be to get some opportunity with the 5G, we have to to, to provide vast uh, value added services, so, which is not easy because we have a big change in. Uh, in, in the standard, so we have to reinvent everything and to redevelop and to find the right partners, technology partners to, to provide the services, and especially depending on the architectures or will be, remain at the end. <clears throat> but on top of that, there is a lot of opportunity like manipulating and providing big data. We develop big data to provide better analytics on the roaming, what's happening, or we can better monetize your roaming, or you can better monetize IoT, or you can 
do check the, 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 the mix of the usage between the IoT, the uh, regular roamers, the tomorrow, the private networks for me. So there is plenty of opportunity once the standard will be set up and, and, and installed. And uh, it's, it's really exciting to see that uh, there is a lot of um, let's say, development areas around the pure transportation of traffic. Okay. Francesco, what, what's, what's the take of, of value-added services at Deutsche Telekom? Similar? Or do you see things panning out differently? Okay, we are, uh, we are planning, as I mentioned before, several proof of concept that we are offering operators. Some of them um, are around signaling, some around how the new transport layer will work to provide quality of service, quality of experience also in roaming. Another one that we are offering is also around the roaming bus. The Romy bus is, uh, as Brendan was saying, is uh, heavily impacted by the new security concept. And depending on how security will be finally decided, it will uh, enable some scenarios versus others. And this is why we want also to cooperate in, in test the different scenarios and see what is the best way to do insourcing or outsourcing in combination of outsourcing or functionality like SAP or not. Okay, so you kind of yeah, you kind of bring me to my next question because when you look at you know why I was discussing about what you told me last year in terms of the ecosystem evolution, because of all the complexity that comes technology in, in terms of technology in terms of business model and so on, that we would see a transformation of the ecosystem. Do you still think that? Absolutely. Okay, so because... we can start. Yeah, go ahead. Continue. Because, uh, okay, first of all, because of the new security concept that will uh, either on one side force operator to insource everything on, or to outsource even more than what they were planning to do in the past. But 5G also stands for cloudification, meaning that operators are somehow now triggered to look to new scenarios. So they could start offering APIs, service access to third parties to move into the B2D to X, business to developers to X. And in this way, also carriers, we could provide, for example, APIs to differentiate how route, routing of traffic could go in transit. So we could offer a service provider the way to choose the best way to route its traffic. Plus, with the new quality of service, we need to transport also this in roaming. So roaming will dramatically change. Okay, guys, do you agree? Anyone disagree with uh, Francesco? Hopefully, someone disagrees at some point. Firas, you're a newbie in our group. <laughs> so, <laughs> do you agree? Is that what you see also in, in the Um Yeah, I agree with uh, Francesco and uh, as well as, uh, you know, with uh, Brandon. Um, just to add on, on that, I mean, there is no doubt that uh, we are in a data explosion era where both technology and uh, commercial has emerged support this this uh, concept this the, the big data um and as we see here in uh, in dubai um you know uh, how how the traffic has exploded you know uh, significantly and uh, and has even you know uh, exceeded the, the pre covid you know uh, period for example uh, i think uh, i personally think that ip providers must be capable of uh, managing any new capacity requirement, um, signaling interworking, you know, 5G security, um, network slicing, all these will, will come into the picture of the 5G roaming technological uh, innovation. And uh, I know that still last year, probably this year, that everyone now is focused of, on NSA, 5G NSA. Um, um, and and I'm, I'm, I'm also noticing that even uh, MNOs has realized that 5G NSA should be, you know, kicked off uh, as soon as possible, followed by Volte uh, roaming, and then probably we will be moving to the SA full-fledged 5G. Okay. But it makes me think, you know, I've been in the business for a while and we've looked at, for example, initially Volte. And we did some statistics and forecasts on Volte roaming based on when Volte was going to be introduced and how long after that Volte roaming would kick in. And we were completely wrong. <laughs> Never trust an analyst. <laughs> but, but in fairness, we were talking to experts in the industry to base our, our, our forecast on. And 
listening to you now, I feel like the same about 5G, where we think 5G roaming will come automatically because 5G is there, but it wasn't the case in Voti. Do you think we'll see the same thing happening or it will be different in 5G? 5G roaming will come soon after the 5G uh, launches will have taken place in the national uh, arena. Cedric? Yeah, uh, in fact, uh, we have to see that 5G is, uh, especially the 5G standalone is changing the paradigm. Because when we move from 2G to 3G to 4G to 5G NSA, it was just more capacity, more boundaries for the same behavior, the same usage. It was not really changing the game. Uh, just more, uh, just more, giving more, more boundaries, more capacity. Now with 5G in the standard, and these are the challenge of 5G. Will it be successful or not, as you say? like Volti was promising also a lot, but we have different use case in the standard itself. So you have the regular broadband connection for end users, but you also have the real-time traffic and you have the massive IoT traffic as well, which are in the standard and will be uh, implemented locally, domestically network, but will ask for roaming as well. And on top of that, you will have the slicing in the private network who will require roaming as well because you will have many operators. And potentially, if we open 5G to private networks, we will have to need to have a, a kind of roaming between private networks themselves. Because if you have a private network in a company A and you are moving to a company B, you want to, to roam potentially because almost anyone will become a, a credential provider and will have its own core network to, to, mm -hmm. to authenticate. So, it's a totally new paradigm, so of course it will change, but we are talking about mid-long term, not of the roaming yeah. for the next year or two years. So what you're saying, we're going to have multiple uh, panels like this in the next few years? <laughs> we're not, this is hopefully, this hopefully, hopefully, yes. I think I get some feedback. I don't look at... Can you hear the, the echo? Echo, yes. I, can hear echo, yeah. I don't know where it comes from. Maybe some. Maybe if you all mute yourself and see, maybe if it stops. Oh, it stopped. It stopped. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Brendan, maybe you've put some echo because you don't want to go next, mm. but uh, you can't run from me. <laughs> <laughs> What's your view? I mean, yeah, you have a I'm... different view because you're a vendor. So, maybe your view is different to the operators. Yeah. I mean, I think we're kind of centrally placed. Um to kind of get some feedback because we, we talk to so many players in the industry and we kind of discover what they need. So uh, we do kind of a, a broader view of what the industry is asking for. I mean, I think what Cedric was saying was was really on on the mark there. It's, it's not just the network capabilities that have changed, it's, it's the players who are playing on it as well. Specifically what I mean there is the explosion of IoT. So we have different demands that are required from uh, communication. Uh, from an IoT perspective than you would from general retail subscribers, which really do focus a lot on bandwidth or kind of data consumption. So what will we need to do from a network perspective in order to support that? Well, some of the things have already been mentioned, like network slicing, uh, security. Um, but as these new use cases come out, um, there's another concept that's not new, but may become more popular, which is local breakout. So uh, we had local breakout we before, the but big, it never yes. really happened. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, exactly. But if you have IoT devices that are really sensitive to uh, network latency or throughput or different quality of service metric, local breakout may become mandatory or necessary in order to serve that use case, uh, particularly when you're talking about ultra reliable low latency connections. So will that, um, will, will that become more of an industry trend? Quite possibly. Um, the, all, not all MNOs are, are crazy about that because uh, the network traffic itself doesn't route back to the home network. So, you know, quality of service can't be assured from the home network. Maybe there's some security or privacy concerns there, perhaps. But the other thing is that as data consumption increases and increases and increases, um, is does it make practical sense to home route all of that traffic? Um, you know, those are the, the, the two sides of the argument, privacy and security, visibility, assurance on one side, and, you know, practicality of low latency, high data throughput. So I think that's going to be a point that will be focused on in the industry as well. Okay. Thank you, Brendan. So I guess we have a question from the audience, uh, but I'm not sure we have anyone here able to answer it. The question is, is Brazil, is the Brazil situation the same as Africa? 5G was just launched, but 4G is not 100% covered in, con in the country yet. Was it the right time to launch 5G? That's probably the million-dollar question. 
Uh, can anyone answer that question? You can give a, you know, an, uh, your own view of that, even if you're not an expert. So should have people well, a, waited? Yeah, go ahead, Brendan. So, so from a technology point of view, um, you know, if you're looking at the 5G NSA, I mean, that's the kind of radio end of things uh, that needs to be deployed. So you're, you're talking about, you know, the Eno B on the uh, 4G and the Geno B on the 5G. So it, it, they're not totally um, disconnected from when you're actually trying to upgrade your network capabilities. So it's not one or the other, but if you can do one piece at a time, actually both sides can actually benefit. So, I mean, this is the, the whole idea of non-standalone, uh, making kind of mm. coverage and kind of quality better as you move forward. Yeah. Mm. Guys, do you agree? Anyone disagree with Brendan? Someone has to disagree, disagree at one point in my, one of my panel. Come on, that's him. Disagree with Brendan. No. <laughs> He's my friend, I wouldn't disagree. But I was going to say, not because they want speed, I mean, they want to see capacity, low latency, quality. You know, these these are the attractions. And then with um, NSA, you find that there's a hunger for, for huge data and the speed, right? So, you know, while you're doing that, on the, on the one hand with 4G, the improvement on 5G NSA is an add-on. You know, it's, it's, you, you're, you're deriving... Um, revenues and good customer experience for customers who are data driven, and really that's where everyone is tilting to. So, well, it's it's still going to take some time to deploy standalone five G. Um, the NSA is, is is just an immediate a low hanging. You ask me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we have eight minutes. You know, time flies when you have in front. We only have eight minutes left. So I will give you a little challenge. We filmed these face off before. Now we're going to do a live face off. So ready or not, here we go. So I'm going to ask you a set of questions and we're going to answer with one word. One word, okay? That's the challenge. It's not easy. <laughs> so one word is the challenge, okay? So here we go. So we'll start with Brendan. So Brendan, what will be the biggest 5G roaming challenge? Uh, interconnect model. Interconnect. <laughs> Fira? Yeah. Um, coverage. Coverage. Cedric? Uh, time to market. Atim? Device penetration. Fran Francesco? Service fragmentation. Okay. Question number two, you're doing good. Not, you know, three words is acceptable. What will be the biggest 5G roaming opportunity, Brendan? Um, enterprise IoT. Fira? Um, uh, mobile broadband. Cedric? IoT. Atim? Consumer and IoT. Francesco? Digitalization. Okay. What will be the biggest 5G roaming loser? We're going to switch it off. Francesco, what will be the biggest? Who, or will, we, who will be the biggest 5G loser? roaming loser the reactionaries the one that don't accept change yes atim the late adopters yes cedric done by providers <laughs> uh oh <laughs> fira um legacy voice and interconnect brendan uh, hopefully fraudsters, if the end-to-end -end security uh, gets put in place. Okay. <laughs> what will be the biggest 5G winner, Francesco? Or who? The customers. Yep. At him? Enterprise code. Cedric? Yeah, enterprise IoT provider. Fira? Yeah, consumers. And Brendan? Uh, another vote for consumers here. That's why we do everything. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now that my last my last question of the challenge, who will be the last man or woman standing? Brendan. Anyone who can adapt and embrace change. Fira? Hopefully everyone. <laughs> You're such a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Rick? Uh adaptative carriers. Okay. Atim? Customer-centric, data-centric organization. And Francesco? 
I agree with uh, the ecosystem. Okay. We, you know, we, we adapt. <laughs> no, I, I, it's an ecosystem, the ecosystem that will adapt. Okay. So we have five minutes left because you were so excellent. You answered all my, I was expecting someone to be rogue and start talking for, for a long time. So you were so good that the audience is sending us more questions, believe it or not. So one of the question is, will the 5G backhaul services be the same as, it's, as, it, as it is for 4G? Anyone wants to take that? Brendan, you're, you're nodding your head. No, well, I mean, as soon as the question is on the, the network core itself, it's it's obviously a brand new protocol that'll be in, in, in use. So with uh, 4G, it's diameter. With uh, 5G, it's, it's HTTP2. And the whole core network has been redesigned. Um, but in, in terms of um, maybe the backhaul and how data is transported, um, there may not be uh, massive differences that are initially, at least. OK. Who else? Anyone to add to that? No, to complete, I said, Brendan, uh, for, for mobile broadband roaming, the tobacco will remain almost the same, just increasing the bandwidth. But with the introduction of local breakout, especially for IoT, it will change uh, the way we back all the service, definitely. OK, OK. And maybe just a few minutes. I, I think one of my pet subjects is the business model. You know, we, we've been talking for a long time for the business model to be evolving. I keep saying, is it going to change? Is it going to evolve? Where, what's your view today? Do you think the business model will ever change? Maybe we can finish on that topic. I think it's an in interesting and complex topic. If we look five years, ten years down the line, we'll, when we look, if we look at our, in our little crystal balls, will we see the same roaming business model? Cédric? Uh, it depends where, where from, from where you stand. From, from operators, from carriers, uh, end user carriers, definitely we will have more Rome Lack Home that we have today with an extension of the Rome Lack Home potentially worldwide. For carriers like IPX carriers, uh, the, today the business model is really focusing on transportation, transportation of signaling, transportation of data, and it will have definitely to evolve to monetize the data itself. The value of the data we carry, not only transport it, but put it in, in, in the shape so you can monetize the data itself you, you carry. It, it will be definitely the way to to save uh, the value on, on on the interconnection. Okay. Anyone else? As to, what do you believe the yeah. business model will look like, Francesco? Okay, they they will become more complex because now quality will come into the into the game. So we will need to support different types of qualities, and the industry must move from purely best effort to premium interconnection if we talk about carriers and to low latency roaming. Uh, plus, there will be the chances that operators will expose some network function and launch services on the fly. And we need to be able to transport this new capacity needs on the fly and, and, and adapt commercially and technically. Okay. So it will change. Anyone has another view? That's yeah. it. Come yeah, on, um, give me something. So <laughs> So, so looking at it commercially, I mean, I've had conversations around quality being the driver for pricing, you know, so if you're offering a certain level of quality, um, some people expect that you charge differently, you know, so there would be some people swinging that way. Um, there will be other people mm -hmm. also thinking about um, leaving it the same charges, current data, just so that they get traction and continue um, five go on a trajectory that we all expect grow by. So yeah, the business models will swing swing this way commercially as well. Okay, cool. So before we close, we have one minute. Anyone wants to add anything? You know, what what do you want to say? Maybe if someone has someone thing to say to the people watching us about 5G, you know, what would they say to them? Good luck or uh, it's gonna be exciting or you know it's gonna be a, a fun ride. What what maybe Francesco, you're you're the sponsor. What's, what's Talk the, to us. You know, what do you want to leave people <laughs> with in terms of a of, of message? T Talk to us. We have. Let's discover it together. <laughs> partner. Let's partner together. Yeah. Let's build the future together. I like that. It's a very positive and zen message, Francesco. So on this note, guys, thank you so much. I think you did good. I'm pretty impressed about my challenge. I'm a bit disappointed no one was naughty. Usually Brendan has, has a tendency to, <laughs> but obviously, Brendan, you're getting some more practice now. It's not your first goal. I'm so. my best behavior. <laughs> yes, you are. So guys, thank you so much. And I will leave the floor to James now.
Thank you, Isabel. Thank you. And thank you, Firas, as well. Thank you. Great having you.